Hi, thanks for joining us today with the Springfield Greene County Public Library doing a virtual workshop. Uh, today you're watching about some art journaling with your dreams. My name is Nicole Chilton and I am an artist and a writer and a community doer and a dreamer. And my first book is coming out this July, um, July 20th, and it's called How Dreams Speak. And it looks at um, a journey into our subconscious and ways that you can personalize and interpret your own dreams instead of just using a dream dictionary that blanket covers everything. So it's more individualized. And one of the best ways to get started on exploring your dream world is to start journaling every day. So I can't wait to share with you some tips and tricks and some of my art, art journals and then we'll do um, an art project together to kind of kickstart your own journal and dreaming uh, process and journey. So thanks again for joining me. I'm really excited to be here. So in order to start a dream practice, an art journaling dream practice, you probably need to start dreaming, right? Um, science shows us that almost everybody dreams. We all go through REM, cycles and stages and even people who are born with blindness have um, more textual and audio and uh, dreams. So everybody does dream, it's just a matter of recalling them. So one of the things that is important is to get good sleep. And I know it's really hard these days um, to turn off our phones before 1 a.m. reading the news and Twitter, but um, if you can set your phone aside and uh, try and wind down a little bit that helps significantly to get good sleep and there's also some other fun tricks and tips that we can do one is having a scented um, eye pillow and i love this one it is it's filled with lavender and flaxseed and it actually has a little bit of amethyst crystals in there because amethyst for um, centuries has been thought to promote dream recall. And um, so this is, it's nice and weighted. It smells so good even after all this time. And, I, and I'd and i like to just put it on my forehead before I go to sleep at night and hope that the dog doesn't wake up and eat it. So I highly recommend finding something that smells really great uh, by your bed. It will help with pleasant dreams. And then if you want to explore the world of crystals, there are a few that, um, are great to incorporate into your evening ritual. I've got three here. Um, So those are just kind of fun. Um, you know, a lot of times crystals can be used just as a reminder. So when you go to bed and you see them at night thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to remember my dreams. We can get into crystals another day, another workshop. One of the great tools to have is just a daily calendar. And of course, I love to make them as festive and colorful as possible. This isn't my artwork. This is by an artist named Natalie Latte, who's one of my favorites. But it's just a daily diary. So, um, you know, and every morning I wake up and I just jot down a few sentences about what, what I was dreaming about. And then if it's something that takes up more space, then I've got other notebooks that I can run to to um, keep adding more to it. If it's just a glimmer or a thought or on the tip of your tongue that, oh, I remember, I remember something and all I can remember is the color orange. So write it down or draw a circle or whatever you can do just to kind of kickstart that. And then throughout the day, you might start remembering little bits and pieces further along the way and uh, start re remembering those, put them in your phone or whatever you can do. And the more you get into that habit, the more you'll be able to start recalling your dreams. Now, some you might be one of those people that dreams vividly and that's great. So just every morning, if you can, just write down a few thoughts, think in present tense, um, like don't think back about, 
oh, I was doing this, say I'm, I'm running through a field and a clown is chasing me. And you don't need to write about what you feel now in present tense, but how you felt while you were dreaming. Because um, one of the really interesting things about dreaming is that while we are asleep, um, the front part of our brain that manages rational thought is turned off or slowed down significantly. And so we are um, doing very irrational things in our dreams, which is why you might be able to have lobster hands or um, visit friends that you haven't seen forever on the moon. So it's, it's kind of fun to embrace that irrationality and uh, really go with it when you're writing it down. So every year I keep an art journal that just kind of collects all of my thoughts and um, processes and experiments. And so there have been a lot of times where I've taken ideas from my dreams and added them into my art journals. Um, it's not super specific about dreams. It might just be a thought or a feeling or a shape that I envisioned in my brain. It's not very literal. So that's where my art journal really helps me is that it's more abstract and emotion-based um, versus, versus a very literal interpretation of my dream. But I also do have way more literal interpretations. And that's this nice book right here. This is soon to be my book. So I get a sneak peek. Let's say I had a dream about bubbles. Then when I had a little bit more time, I could sit and really focus and draw out bubbles and start thinking about the colors I'm using and why I chose those colors and start thinking more about the dream. And so thinking about even specifically getting further into dream symbology, what, what are bubbles physically? Um, symbolically in pop culture, you know, um, so I start asking questions and then I start thinking about dream metaphors like bursting your bubble was something disappointed. Did my bubbles burst in the dream or was I happy and playing with them? So I really just start going through and um, analyzing really deep each symbol that pops up in the dream and it's uh, it's opened up a lot of new thought patterns for me. So I start thinking of things more as works of art or like watching a movie and thinking, what's the director trying to say? So what's my subconscious trying to say when I was playing with a bubble and every time I touched them, they shattered. When I had a dream about luggage, I just kind of sat down and started really thinking about, about luggage. Um, I think, did I write my dream? I'm packing a suitcase for a long trip. I keep adding more things that I think I'll need. The suitcase is getting stuffed, but it still fits everything. Then I realize I have to unpack it all to make a carry-on bag and then repack it again. This goes on and on, but I'm so excited for the trip that I don't care. So I'm thinking about, so I wrote the dream down and then I'm drawing out the, the luggage in a literal sense. And then I'm trying to think like, what, what does the luggage mean? And um, dream psychologists like Carl Jung thinks that anytime you have a vessel, it means it's like your body or your brain. So what am I unpacking and repacking and trying to make it all fit? What in life is going on where I'm just trying to stuff everything in and is it too hard to carry? Can I carry it all? Do I need help? Do I need to take stuff out to make room? So that's kind of where it's really exciting to um, start analyzing your own dreams and thinking about these um, objects and symbols and relating them to your daily life. So after this, and when this was happening, I also try and keep track of, you know, the days that these were happening. And at that time I was starting a new job and it was just, I was so excited for it, but it was a lot. So, you know, I'm putting in a lot of time and a lot of new ideas. And then I still have family and art and writing and all of the other projects I'm working on. So it was a really meaningful dream to uh, wake up and have that aha moment. And so that's kind of where my dream recording is so exciting and so important because what could just be a normal dream is maybe something where you're like, oh yeah, I do need help with that. Or that's a great idea. I'm gonna write the next horror novel based on that clown that chased me in the field. 
So um, I really hope that, that I inspire you to start keeping track of your dreams and um, journaling about them. So like I said, sometimes I'll do more abstract um, journaling and then sometimes it'll be much more literal. And for example, I had a couple dreams recently where one of them, there was the theme of pine trees and pine wood constantly. So I researched into pine cones and I thought it was really fascinating. We have a gland in our brain called the pineal gland and um, it is thought to be the center of enlightenment in our brain by a lot of cultures because it is what regulates our sleep cycle. And I thought that that was really fascinating. So I did a little third eye um, enlightened pine cone here. And then I had a dream also where I lost my marbles, quite literally. I dropped marbles and I couldn't think what I just lost. And people kept saying, Nicole, you lost your marbles. So this is, these are examples where I could focus on creative practice and paint things that were um, figurative instead of abstract. And it's a way to practice and I wouldn't ever sit down and think, I'm gonna paint a pine cone today with a third eye in the middle. But because of the dream, then it prompted me to do that. So that's just another really exciting way that dreams can encourage a creative practice or um, an eye-opening experience. So I'll do a quick little time lapse of some of the painting that I did here um, so you can see some of that process. So the art project component of today will be, we'll make a page in our journal that will remind us to be an active dreamer. So we'll make our, our intention setting. Um, it's just, and it can be as simple as saying, I will remember my dreams. So we'll, that's what we're gonna work on today. So what you'll need is a piece of paper, a nice weight, or a journal, a notebook. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy. I don't like using expensive tools because for me, it's more about the process of of doing it versus the final result. So um, I'll make ours in just a, a journal today. And then some of my favorite tools to use are um, paint brushes. Again, I don't spend a lot of money on, on my journaling supplies. I've got markers, scissors, pencils, tape, pens. So I've got stuff here and then some scraps of paper. I found this, uh, shape at the Ace Hardware, and I really liked that shape because I thought it looked like a door, and I was also looking for paint. So I've got scraps of paper. I'm a big fan of the Folk Art Ceramicote dollar paints at the craft store because they come in 10,000 colors and I don't have to worry about mixing. I, want to, I really want to just go fast. I keep everything in a little case I've got scissors for cutting, more markers, the all important glue stick. Can't go anywhere without a glue stick. Washi tape is always really great. More pens and stamps. I've got a few things like stickers and rub, rub on, oops, you know, like rub on the paper. Just, you know, I collect all sorts of stuff. I love going on Etsy to see what journalers are selling, making. It's pretty addicting and you don't have to go buy anything either. Um, some of the best, best tools are, are free or relatively free. Um, paint chips, the insides of envelopes when you get mail are always really great and the paper is pretty sturdy. Um, the, like I said, the paints don't have to be expensive. I don't use, you know, super fancy markers, but um, you can use anything you want because really it's just about getting stuff out of your brain and getting it on paper so that you can start um, setting those intentions to, to get into a habit of creating.
right now, we're going to make a journal page that's going to say, I will remember my dreams. That's simple. Blue seems kind of dreamy, right? So I, like I said, I do not think, I just put stuff down. I'm going to paint on the paper. I've got a brush that's probably, yeah, it's probably already got paint on it from And again, when you don't use precious materials, then you're not super stressed about making mistakes or messing up. And I probably put too much paint on here, so I'm gonna go on to the, the next page too. So you can fill your page if you want. You can fill half of it, like this page up here. Sometimes I'll get started on something and then I realize the paper that I'm just putting my extra paint on ends up looking way cooler and more in line with what I pictured in my head. And so then I go with that. So there's always something to do. Um, I found this stamp of a key. I kind of liked it thinking about unlocking dreams and unlocking your subconscious. So I'm just gonna stamp it while it's wet and see what happens. Again, I don't think too deeply about the process. I don't think you can see anything there. No, so I'll probably need to use actual ink. So I've got some silver ink here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. And I'll put another one here. Crossed keys, does that mean something? Probably. And let's see. Again, with this paint chip, it just reminded me of a door. And if we're gonna be maybe keys and doors I don't think I need the whole thing though. So that's where scissors come in handy. So I cut it a little bit and I'll glue it. I think actually this came from the library, this glue stick for one of their take home kits for kids. If you haven't done those, those are great. You stop by the library in the kids section and they've got craft projects for kiddos and mine are ages nine and 11. So they can do them all on their own without supervision. And they have been a wonderful addition to our homeschooling life. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this here. I have some Van Gogh washi tape. Looks like starry night. We're talking dreams, right? Let's put this here and cover up the little paint thing. How's it looking so far? Hmm. I need a rose. No. Not today. I have this little note card I bought off of Etsy and I kind of liked the figures in it from the Zodiac, but I don't know if I'll use that either. So a lot of it's just, you know, feeling what's right and what isn't right. This is some of the, my favorite paint. Sometimes I think I've never 
grown beyond a seven-year-old who loves glitter. Okay, so I'm just sticking. It's kind of like glue, so you want to make sure that you don't use a super expensive paintbrushes if you're not going to clean them very well afterwards. So I'm just putting little stars everywhere. You could cut out stars in paper if you want. Or what else do you like at night? Is there a favorite tea that you drink? Maybe you could get your tea bag, the wrapper of it, or something from the box and recreate. Okay. And I've got some metallic markers that I really like. Um, they're like brush pens and they I'll just kind of put it here so you can see what it's like. But they really shimmer. It's hard to tell, I think. go. It's not too complicated. It's for nobody's eyes, but my own. Well, and all of yours now, but so when you make it, you don't have to worry about posting it to Instagram or taking a picture of it or sending it to anybody or hanging on your wall. It's for you. And it says, I will remember. Did I? Oh my gosh. I spelled remember wrong. Oh my goodness. Well, I will remember my dreams. I'm really nervous. Can you tell? <laughs> so what you could do is you could keep that in your art journal or you could rip it out and put it under your bed in your mattress. And then, you know, your first dream, if you have extra pages, start writing. Well, thanks again for hanging out with me today and talking about dreams and art and journaling and all of that. I hope that you learned something exciting or something new. And if you have any questions or um, start your own dream practice, definitely get in touch with me. My website is NicoleChilton.com. And I also am active on Instagram. It's Nicole.Chilton.Art. So if you look me up and you, you want a message or anything, go ahead and do that. I'm always excited to talk about dreams. On my website, you can also sign up for um, an e-newsletter that I mail out once a month, maybe twice a month if I'm feeling really excited. And I go over a lot of more on dream collection and, and ideas and um, inspiration and, and fun stuff like that. That's It's not all dream related, but a lot of it is because I, I love to dream. I also am so excited to be there, be here with you today. And thanks again for your time. Bye.